And now, because this uh, fall off is still looking pretty regular, um, I have that other random attribute. If we look at our info here, we've got that other random attribute, random two, that we can use as well to drive the, uh, you know, some variation into maybe the emission. So let's come back over here and composite in a um, composite in that other random attribute. So I'm going to throw down another point attribute and bring that in here. And we'll throw down, uh, this time let's use a vector, multipl a vector multiplier. So vector mul. So ours vector mul is basically the same thing that we just did right here with the color composite set to multiply, except it's just a different node that does the same thing and you don't actually have to you know, pick from a drop down what kind of compositing mode you want. So sometimes I use this one. Um, and for the attribute that we're looking up, we're gonna look up rand2 as it were uh, named before. So I'm gonna just turn this off and then back on. And you can see that that random uh, attribute is kind of driving the um, brightness of the emission in more of a random way on top of the ramp that we're supplying right here. So we could actually um, option drag this ramp over here and kind of use it to, uh, if I just shake this node, it should disconnect itself. And then I can drop it on this stream right here. And then if I want to, I could like kind of, you know, um, determine like how many particles I wanted to light up by just kind of cranking the contrast on this ramp. So if I only wanted a few particles illuminating, I could kind of bring it down like this, or I could just shift select both of these knots and kind of drag them off to the right and see it update and kind of knock out some of those, um, some of those colors, which is kind of cool. Um, I might just uh, bring this back to kind of some normal range. I'll just uh, maybe just uh, leave it right here. This looks kind of cool. And I think this is a little bit red yet. So I'm going to kind of just maybe just leave this at an orange value. And <laughs> I guess I don't really need a ramp right now, but it doesn't matter because I'm still allowed to set a color ramp with only one um, with only one knot on it. So <laughs> I'm just going to use it for that. And so I got this kind of nice um, reddish kind of broken up uh, emission uh, coming off here. And I might extend it a little bit more towards the end of this and just kind of get it to remain bright a little bit longer towards the end of this range. Um, sometimes that's what I'll do is I'll just kind of grab the white area and just keep pulling it off to the side to just kind of fill it in a little bit. Just kind of crank these out to the end. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Yeah, I'll just kind of bring that in. Yeah. However you uh, see fit, you can do kind of whatever you want here. Nice. So now um, just a couple of the things I wanted to talk about. That's kind of the basics of building a particle shader. You really just kind of have these attributes that you, you'll either have these attributes or you won't. It depends on what, um, art, what the artist you're working with has um, supplied in the particle simulation. But you definitely should feel comfortable going back to your Houdini person and asking them, hey, you know, um, it would be really great if we could age these based or if we could color these based off of the age of them. And then they could make sure that in the next iteration of the simulation that they include a normalized age attribute for you or some other random attributes for you. We are able to put any type of data in here that you could probably possibly imagine imagine and uh, it, it'll make the it'll make it'll it's just an infinite amount of flexibility when it comes to rendering and shading particles when it, when you start uh, working with these attributes like so.